Hello everybody, Don KK4QAM here. It's been a while since I posted a video. I thought I'd give you a little quick update. A while back I started a new project here for the uh, home ETH. It's an autonomous satellite tracker. It's an Arduino controlled satellite tracker with azimuth and elevation. It, it will also create its own web page so that you can connect to the web page select your satellite it will download the Kelperian data and then you hit track and it will engage the azimuth and elevation servos to have a continuous sweep on that satellite I hope you enjoy it stick around okay let's try something different let's take a look at the web page for the autonomous satellite tracker. I uh, have Google open here, autonomous satellite tracker, clearskyinstitute.com slash ham slash AST. This is the same web page that has the project ham clock made by the same developer if you're aware of it. Now, here's a picture of the original autonomous satellite tracker. Uh, control box, battery, everything there, tripod, an elevated servo for uh, elevation here with a, looks to be a log periodic from Elk on there with the azimuth servo mounted here. Uh, links to the original article and its manuscript after, uh, updated after publication, a block diagram here that shows the original Yes, that is the original with the Arduino Omega and the Ethernet shield in it. Um, this is not the direction that I went. I chose to go this direction with the ESP Huzza. I, I guess that's the way you pronounce it. This is a, a wiring diagram to the I2C to the sensor and pulse width modul modulation for the servos. 3.3 volts of power supply to the sensor and PWM board, 6 volt power supply to the servos, as well as the 3.3 comes back around to the GPS and the ESP8266. These connections exiting this block diagram would tie back into the original block diagram here to the servos, the 9DOF sensor or spatial sensor through this connection here. The main changes were done inside the, the, the main control box with the different uh, controllers. Here is a picture of the ESP8266, the GPS board with a connection for an external GPS antenna terminal strip, two buck converters, this one is 3.3 volts and I'm going to assume that this one is the 6 volt with a 11.1 volt 2200 milliamp hour battery attached. On the right hand side of the web page in the notes you can see here notes from Whiskey Alpha Cell 7 Delta Lima Golf. There's some good information in there you probably want to check it out. And Whiskey 7 Golf Romeo Mike reports that the servo used for the tilt platform, I believe that's it, is strong enough for the arrow antenna. And anybody that's tried to hand track a satellite with the arrow antenna knows that it can get relatively heavy after a while. The original source code was made in 2016, and here's a link to that. Uh, there was an update in 2018, and the most recent update was done in 2020 on June the 16th. A uh, list of the changes are here, and the new code can be downloaded by this clicking this hyperlink here. The word here is the hyperlink. It's easily overlooked, and you have to really pay attention to what you're doing, and you won't see it. It also goes along to tell you that you need the following libraries, the Tiny GPS, the BNO055, the Sensor, Servo, and Servo Library, and the ESP Arduino port. 
it oper the way it operates here is the the Huzzah or the ESP8266 powers up and if it's previously connected to a Wi-Fi access point it'll use the same address and connect to it. If there's it has not been previously connected or that that access point is not there it will create its own Wi-Fi access point called SatTrack and you will connect to SatTrack on your wireless device and then go to address 192.168.10.10. You should see a little form that you fill out so this is the SSID of what I want you to connect to. This is the password. This is the address I want you to use. This is your subnet mask and your gateway and then hit send. Wait a few seconds and turn the, turn off the tracker. Connect back to your normal Wi-Fi and then turn the tracker on. Give it a little bit and you would see it. You'll be able to connect to the web page. Here is a screenshot of the web page interface. This is already connected to an access point. As you can see, of course, if you have pop-ups, a, a pop-up blocker enabled on your browser, this window here, the sky path, will not show up. You'll have to disable your pop-up blocker. The main page here is, shows the IP address that it, it currently is when it's connected, now tracking the satellite that is selected, and you also have a option here to reboot the Arduino. This section shows uh, the loaded TLE or Calperian data and you can type here in this box the name of the satellite such as AO85 and there will be a button here that gives you a, an option for AMSAT or Celeste Track or Space Track which one you want to do uh, connect to to get the data so you will collect it. This will go out over the internet download the specified data for the satellite that you've typed in here, and it will display it. Another option is that you can go to AMSAT or your specific website of choice and download the Calperian data and break it into three line text files like so, and then you can upload a file by clicking upload and going through the, the, the browser to select the correct file, and then erase button here erases all the data out of this window and I believe that you have to select this window and delete what you typed in out in order for it to clear that. Lower on the on the page you'll see the target is it says it's up it gives you the azimuth value here the elevation the how old the Kelperian data is the range and the rate Doppler shift and the summit with some uh, time values over here. The spatial sensor is showing uncalibrated here, but it's basically it'll show you azimuth elevation and probably temperature. GPS on this one is not showing having a lock, but you can get an idea about the, the time and date, and latitude and longitude. The gimbal, how many pulses the, that is, is going out to it. This middle column here, you can override where, where you have an input field at. You can override the azimuth, the elevation, the UTC, and the date, latitude, longitude, and so forth down here just simply by typing a number in these, these boxes and hitting enter. That's the quick and dirty overview of the web page that the autonomous satellite tracker will create. The original maker, designer, Again, is Elwood Downey Whiskey Bravo Zero Oscar Echo Whiskey. It's, it appears to be a nice, nice device if you ever want to try one. And hopefully mine will, will come out without any type of major tweaks or reconfiguration. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Look for more videos as they come out in the series of the build of the Autonomous Satellite Tracker 7.3.